like our mission statement says, we are on a mission of discovery. And I truly think that we're just at the cusp of it. Seth, Dylan, what's going on? How are you? Hey, I'm being great. How about yourself? I'm doing good. It's great to meet you down in Florida. And for those viewers that are listening or watching, staff is the uh, president and CEO of iMetal Resources. It seems like you've just had a lot of news come out and uh, it's an exciting time for you. So give me the 30,000 foot view of what's going on in iMetal Resources. Huh. Where are things at? Okay. Yeah. And the, you know, I'm so glad to be here and uh, thanks for the opportunity of, uh, you know, obviously talking about our, I think, great little exciting company. iMetal Resources, you know, we're, we're like a lot of companies. We're obviously looking for a discovery. Like our mission statement says, we are on a mission of discovery. And I truly think that we're just at the cusp of it. So within the last 24, uh, last 24 months, we've actually completed about 4,600 meters of drilling on our flagship property. Gauganda West. Gauganda West is a great little project. It sits in within the Abitibi Greenstone Belt, which is a belt that runs through the uh, provinces of Ontario and Quebec in Canada, east Eastern Canada. And uh, the Greenstone Belt, uh, for viewers who aren't aware, is one of the most prolific uh, mineral producing belts in the world. Since the early 1900s, when the first discoveries were made, there have been well over 200 million ounces of gold produced and well over 400 million ounces of silver and other metals. Um, we're in what's called the shiny tree camp, which is still a relatively new and underexplored camp within the Greenstone Belt. We're actually right next to the border, very close to the border of Quebec. Our property, Gauganda West, it's roughly 150 million, uh, sorry, it's, it's roughly a 150 square kilometer property. And like I said, we've just completed about 4,600 meters. We've done about seven or eight holes in the last, uh, in the last, uh, I'd say 18 months and every hole has hit mineralization, but we actually announced last summer that we had a discovery hole. This discovery hole basically is about 50 meters of a gram of gold in the ground. Our technical team thinks that if we can hit these types of grades, with this, uh, uh, with these types of intercepts pretty quickly, say another half dozen holes plus, we could be sitting on three, 400,000 ounces of gold. That's not in the ground yet, but that's the potential that our team thinks that we potentially could have if we could hit these types of holes and, or better. Now, 300,000 ounces is not going to be a company maker, but if you take a, take a look at our, our project. And you see where it sits. We share a border with a much larger company that hosts a, a well-known deposit called the Juby deposit. This is basically a multi-million, multi-million ounce deposit. And the key to our discovery hole is it sits less than 700 meters from where that deposit ends on the other side of, uh, of the fence with our neighbors. So we're really excited. We're looking to be, uh, uh, an, announcing a small financing here. We're looking to probably raise up to 2.5 million Canadian and our plans will be to continue drilling on the success of that discovery hole. And of course, with the tight, uh, cap structure that we have right now, we only have roughly about 5.6 million shares issued and issued and outstanding. We also are looking at some other advanced project. But our main focus for now is build on the success of this discovery hole and hopefully get to defining a resource. Got it. So you've answered a lot of my questions already. I was going to ask them um, if that's okay with them. So you're 700 meters away um, from a neighbor. Can you, are you at liberty to give the neighbor's name? Yeah, well, actually, we share a border with our neighbor. Our neighbor is Eris Mining. They trade on the TSX. Yeah. They are a much, much larger company. I, I believe they're north of one and a half billion, one and a half billion Canadian market cap. But if they are focused on a high grade gold production in South America. So a big portion of their market cap comes from that production in South America. And, you know, uh, this deposit, as I said, 
it's right. It's basically, it's next door. You, you can walk there roughly in 15, 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. Sorry, I was just going to say, so our team Tom, definitely thinks that we're on to something here. Yeah. So, and again, Seth, please, if you cannot comment, just say I can't comment. Um, Sarah, you know, right on the border, you share us a border with Eris Mining. Um, that being said, you're 700 meters away. Your discovery hole is 700 meters away from them. The actual deposit, the, from, from the actual QB deposit. You, you might not be able to come in into this, but to me, as a potential investor and somebody interested, it sounds to me that's, that's the same vein. So, um, what kind of, I, if you can comment on that, what kind of, do they have? Uh, you, you know, I, I don't really want to talk about their, their, uh, uh, deposit, but what I can say is that, uh, I think the theory with, um, our project has always been that we think that we have the potential continuation of that type of uh, structure that's on their property, or, you know, we potentially could have where the origination of the feedstock was. We're not sure. We're still very early. And, uh, that is the plan with continued drilling. You know, once we close this financing, we continue drilling. We're hoping to either define, like I said, a resource, whether it's a part of your safe structure. Nobody knows yet, but we definitely think that we have more than one potential structure on our property. And that's what we're really excited about. It seems to be the similar type of rock. And again, like I said, you know, the Abitibi, this whole neighborhood, there's some of the world's largest gold deposits in the world. And, uh, you know, Kirkland Lake gold was, was built off their, their success, uh, um, in the region here. And they're not too far from where we are as well. Okay, got it. So, uh, um, a couple of things that I want to go into, um, really go into share structure. Um, sure. What is the ETA? I guess if drilling now. What's the ETA or the plan? What's the next step until you actually work? Go ahead. Sure. Uh, actually, sorry, Andy. You know, we're actually not drilling now. Um, I, like I said, uh, we're going to be uh, uh, completing a financing now potentially up to 2.5 million Canadian dollars. And then from there, I think that, uh, we will probably get a drill bit churning before, uh, the end of the year, because in this region, one of the great advantages that we have in Ontario and Quebec, it compared to say British Columbia or other regions of the world, you can drill year round, save for a few months in the fall because of the melt and, and in the spring. Well, you can drill year round. It's actually preferable to be drilling when the ground is rock hard and frozen. The equipment is very heavy. Otherwise it could get uh, tied down and bogged. So, you know, short term plans close on a up to $2 million, 2.5 million Canadian dollar financing, get back to drilling, hopefully, uh, do double what we've already completed 4,000 to 5,000 meters. And we're hoping to real quickly be able to, you know continue on that success of that discovery hole and start, you know, building hopefully a resource. That's what the plan is. Yep. Okay. Excellent. Let's talk about, before we go to share structure, I have some questions about that. Give us real quick your background. Sure. Um, I got my start, I guess, uh, back in 2004, uh, I was involved with a company called us geothermal. That was really my first kick at the can in terms of working with natural resource companies, working in the junior, uh, uh mining industry or natural resource industry. Uh, I was fortunate uh, that was a great project, but you know, again, we started with a sub $2 million Canadian market cap. We had some old, uh, discovery holes in Idaho and, uh, it was the site of the no North America's first, uh, geothermal binary, uh, uh, uh binary cycle. Uh, power plant. We ended up, uh, acquiring these old, uh, 30, 35 year old abandoned wells. And we ended up raising, I think the first, uh, $2 million Canadian grew that company, small, you know, wall of your overnight success story, grew that from just some old abandoned wells, constructed three geothermal power plants. The first one there in Idaho, Nevada, and Oregon got to about a $350 million market cap us. And 15, yeah, 15 analysts, uh, covering the company. 
And that company was bought out actually by, at the time, and I believe it still is, the world's largest geothermal producer. So I was fortunate, got to work with some really good guys, got to meet some really good people, both Bay Street, Wall Street, and Howe Street. So hoping to build that, the same kind of success, anything I get involved in, looking to build, uh, lo looking to build an asset, grow the asset, and of course, hopefully get taken out by somebody much, much larger than us. Okay, so let's talk about the share structure here. Ed said, so I will take some notes here. You have 5 million shares. Is that fully diluted? 5.6, uh, 5.6 issued outstanding. There's some warrants. Fully diluted would be 6.5, roughly. Okay, where are the, if you don't mind me asking, where are the warrants written at? Uh, you know, the, the company went through a bit of a restructuring in the last uh, year. Uh, some of the warrants are probably at about the $3 range. I think the lowest warrants are at about a dollar fifty. We're currently trading at about twenty, twenty, twenty-two cents Canadian. Uh, it's a very tight, I think, structure. It really hasn't traded that much, and uh, you know we haven't really done a lot of marketing, Andy. I think the first uh, real marketing I did was actually in Florida when we met. Yeah, yeah, those are really out of the money. Which is, I mean, this if I'm an investor, not a warrant holder. Yeah. And I'm not an investor, just so everybody knows, as a PI. That's music to my ears. <laughs> this kid's so oh, Yeah, I mean, it would be nice to see those warrants exercised. Uh, that means that, uh, you know, we've actually increased the market cap and we're having some success. Absolutely. But what Beans. you will, uh, what happens a lot of times in this space is that there's a, there's a ceiling on where the warrants are written. So um, just, they have a ways to run. So that's fantastic. Okay. Um, yeah, really, um, what else can I ask you here? I think you really nailed it actually. Um, what thoughts would you give potential investors from now until, uh, really the next news cycle, or perhaps that's really soon, what should they be aware of and look out for? Well, I think that the investors and potential investors could look towards, uh, seeing I better close on this financing announce the drilling program, uh, and, uh, potentially, like I said, there are some other assets that we are looking at. We do have actually have ongoing discussions with, uh, you know, some, some other much larger players who might be focused on, uh, on some really large assets and they might have some advanced projects that they can't give any love to. So we are all obviously with a tight structure, like, uh, like we have. And I think the kind of success that we're poised for with Gold City, uh, you know, 2,700 an ounce, knocking on the door of 2,800, I, I think we all kind of can see that, um, uh, I, I, I think it's a fairly, uh, I think it's a fair statement to say that I think that we're still in the early innings of a fairly, I think, long bull run for the commodity space and specifically, you know, copper and gold and silver, right? And, uh, you know, we definitely are poised for this, uh, I think this gold bull run. So we're excited. As it should be. Saf, if people uh, want more information, if they want to purchase your stock, like you give your website as well as um, your stock tickers. And they sure. should. Okay. Uh, the website is imetal, singular, resources.ca. And we trade on the, the TSX Venture, IMR, and on the OTCQX, IMRFF. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Saf. Really appreciate your time for coming on. Andy, thank you so much for having me. Hopefully yeah. talk to you soon. I'd like that. Thank you.